G'day ladies, my name is Charlotte and I'm the founder of Fit La Femina Exclusive. Today I want to talk about startup business, the real ugly truth about it but also the mind power behind it. So starting up a business it is not creating a social media brand, putting a logo on it and saying this is what I'm going to do. That is not a startup business. A startup business starts with a concept, a business plan, marketing research and a lot more things to come. Let's first talk about how to start up a business. First, you need to evaluate your market. Is there a market for what you want to do? Is there a research for what you want to do? But also, what are you offering the community and the economy that isn't already there? Okay, with the economy being in recession, there is a lot of potential for new startup companies, but there's also potential for current startup companies to evolve and to change. Then you need to define your core business of your startup company. For example, if you open a salon, what differs your salon to the salon three or four kilometers from you? What services do you offer that the others don't? What people don't understand is it's not just the business that makes the difference, it's the owner that makes the difference. I know about a lot of businesses that if I walk in there, they are not state of the art, best of the best, everything to offer business and that's what makes them work. It's not, there's a million reasons why that business shouldn't be working. But they're working because of the owner, they're working because of the people being hands-on and delivering the service that they said they would offer to deliver. People have this idea in their mind that being the director or the CEO of a company means people do the work for you and they bring the money in and you just sit back and relax. It's actually the exact opposite. Being the director and a CEO of a company means you stand in front of your staff. You stand in front of everyone and you take the sun. You take the burn. You take the shots because it's your company. And it's your responsibility to employ the competent people to do what you set out for them to do. If you don't employ the competent people to do it, it's not their failure or their mistakes. It's on you as a company owner and director. Let's go back to your core business. For example, I'm going to use a hairdresser. Is a hairdresser a hairdresser? Yes, that is your title. But is that your core business? No. Your core business is consulting for hair because you need to deliver a service by telling women what is wrong with their hair, what their hair can and can't do and what would be best suitable for them. I do understand that people say that I pay you so you do with my hair what I want. 100% I don't disagree with that. But if you do something wrong to that person's hair, will they come back? Will they have any respect for you as a business owner or as a hairstylist? No, they won't because they're going to blame you for the results. Even though it's what they wanted, you should have warned them. You should have consulted with them and said, listen, Linda, this is not going to work on your hair. I do understand that this is what you want, but it's going to be a progress. It's going to be a, a whole session that we are going to go through to get to where you want to be. Us women, we are stubborn. I want it and I want it now. But you as a hairdresser need to consult with your clients and say, I do understand that this is where you want to be, but this is it. This is what it's going to take to get there. And if you can't consult with them, you won't keep your clientele base because you'll make that person happy for that hour or two hours that she's there. But the first time she washes her hair or straightens it and it burns down, she's going to be blaming you and it's going to kill your business. So as a hairdresser, for example, your core business is not being a hairdresser. Your core business is consulting for hair. You are skilled and trained and you did education on what is best for a human's hair. Can she, can't she? What is the state of her scalp? What is the best nutrition products? Everything that she has to use to get her hair to the condition that she needs it to be and that you need it to be. Okay, you are like a doctor, but for hair. It's a stupid example that I'm using at the moment, but we're getting it wrong. We think our core business is I'm a hairdresser. You're not. You are a hair consultant because they pay you per hour that they're there. And they pay you for your service. They pay you for the products that you use on them. So understand there's a fine line difference between what you are in the sense of your title, but what you offer and what you need to do. Making someone happy now, it's short-term suffering, it's short-term apologies, it's short-term um, pleasure and long-term suffering. 
There's no benefit in it. There's nothing that you're gonna gain out of it. Because for every bad client, you lose 10 potential clients. But for every good client, you maybe gain three potential clients. You need to understand how it works. You need to understand how the system works. A business spreading by word of mouth is a lot stronger than a business promoting their business on social media and paying for it. Because yes, you get the leads and you get the clients, but are they sustainable? No. It needs to be spread by word of mouth and that's where I'm going towards. Then I want to talk about when you start up the business, the ugly truth that no one talks about or fails to mention. It is not easy starting up a new company. Do not be fooled. On social media, everyone portrays that it is so easy and it's get this plan, get this concept, do this and boom, my company is sustainable and will work. It will not. Listen to me, it will not. Real business owner that do sustainable businesses, it's not easy. It's hard work, it's failure over and over. It's replanning, it's rescheduling, it's remodeling what you wanna do up until you get it right. So these, all these companies that all of a sudden just pop up and they're there and they're working, there's a difference. Some of them have shown from the beginning what they've done and others only show the end result. But there's this whole big mountain in between of what that person went through with their team to get to where they are. And that's what people don't talk about. That's what people don't say. If you start up a business and you can't figure out why it's not working, are you going through all the processes? Are you going through the failures? Are you going through the heartache? Are you going through the late nights of planning and wondering and reworking and remodeling and rescheduling? Are you going through the motions? Or are you just portraying that this is what I have and it's working and it is what it is? Because it's not. It will never be sustainable and it will never ever work. A good business plan is not based off from the right, from the first time. It's not. A good business plan is based off a process of failures and remodeling and rescheduling and reworking to know that what you are doing will not just benefit the economy, but the community. Because you feed off the economy, but the community feeds you. That is what puts money on your table and that is what feeds your employees and your staff. Last but not least, when starting up a business, think about three things, location, marketing, and service offering. Firstly, a lot of people have brilliant businesses, but they open it in the wrong location. For example, Fit Love Femina Exclusive, being a women's only facility, I need to open my facility in the safest possible environment that I can, because I'm only offering services to women, for example. Secondly, marketing. How are you putting your business out there? Are you only doing it through social media? Do you realize that you need a website? Do you realize that you need to be able to interact with people in person and communicate with them and do networking through other businesses to be able to grow your own? And thirdly, service offering. Is it that what you are offering, is it needed? Is it wanted and is it there? Because if it's not either one of those three, you are wasting your time, your money, and your patience. You really don't need it. The service that you offer needs to be so exclusive to you as a business owner, and you need to be able to give that service that only you can give in the way that you give it. So starting up a business, what differentiates your business to anyone else is you. Not just what you offer, not how you offer it, not how you do it, it's you. If, it's, if the business that the same offering as you opens up next to you, what differentiates the two businesses is the owners. So if you're not capable of doing what you want to give, who you want to be and what you are, your business will never work because your business is you. And that's how it is. If it's not based on you and what you're capable of, your business will never work.